Welcome to Truth and Company Boxing Podcast for another segment of 20 Random Questions. I'm your host, John the Truth Theoria, and today's guest is former world champion Peter Manfredo Jr. How you doing, Peter? I'm great. I woke up next to my beautiful wife. It's another beautiful day. <laughs> okay, nothing wrong with that. No, I'm so how are you? So how are you doing? Do you got anything to do with boxing these days, or are you just working hard? No, nah, I just go to work every day. I was supposed to actually fight two years ago in, in Italy. I never been to Italy, so I had a fight down there, and I was training for it, and one of my buddies, uh, Jason Estrada, I grew up with him. He was a 2000 Olympian. He owns a gym uh, in Providence, so he said, hey, listen, I got some sparring for you. Come down. So I went down to his gym to spa. I see this big heavyweight getting ready in, in the ring and, uh, you know, just warming up. And I said, is that who I'm sparring? He said, yep. I said, okay, give me a minute. So I get ready and then I spar him. And then we go, we do the sparring. And as I'm driving home, I'm feeling my right side's all numb. And I didn't know why. So I went to my doctor and all that stuff. And they ran a bunch of tests on me. I seen a bunch of different neurologists. To make a long story short, it's been like over a year or two. It's been two years since it happened. But um, they found a bruise on my brain. And that's what's causing this. So I didn't end up going to Italy to fight. And, um, you know, it's too bad because I did pretty good in that sparring session. But the guy was too big. He probably had 40 pounds on me. If you want to look him up, his name is Sean Bay. He's out of Rhode Island. But he, you'll see, like, he's huge. I actually know who he is. I've had him on the show before. Well, there you go. Well, you can ask him. Say, did you spot Peter Manfredo? How, how is Peter Manfredo? So he'll tell you. So listen, um, I want to bring up, you have a small connection to the, to Minnesota and to the Minnesota fans. And some of them might not be aware, but maybe some of them are still upset with you from years ago. I don't know, but you fought Anthony Basante, who a guy that was on the contender with you, you fought him in Minnesota. You didn't fight in Minnesota, but you guys fought and you fought for a title. You won the title. And then years later, you fought another big name here from Minnesota, which is Matt Vanda, the Predator, and you and you made and you took a title, you know that that he was trying to win as well. So, how how did in your mind how did both of those fights go? I know you love both of the guys. You've told me that before, but yeah, they, listen, they're two great guys, uh, and both fights were wars. Uh, Anthony Bonsante was on ESPN two. Um, it was a twelve round fight. Uh, you know, I think it went all 12, so I won a decision. But uh, I won the NABO title that night. It was a tough, tough fight, and he was a good fighter, and he's a good friend of mine. I send him a text message every morning. You know, I, I check on him. I check on all my people every day. He's one of them. And, I, hey, uh, I get a text I get a text all the time, too. So Yeah, well, all my people, I just want to make sure they wake up every day just to say hi. You want to read the message, it's a bonus, but I just want to make sure you wake up. Um, and then uh, Matt Vanda, he was another guy that wanted to come and, and beat me up. He said, I'm going to have some Italian food tomorrow night. And then it just didn't happen that way. But he was a tough, tough guy. And it was a good fight. And uh, I love both those guys. There's nothing but respect for them. Okay. So you ready for these random 20 questions? Whatever. Whatever you could do. <laughs> okay. Question one. How did you get involved in the sport of boxing? So I had no choice. I was born to be a fighter. My mother and father used to carry me around when I was a baby, had gloves on me, and said he's going to be a world champion someday. He's going to be the next fighter. So I really had no choice. I was in the gym every day of my life, <clears throat> and that's basically what I did. So when I met my wife, and well, she's my wife now, but she was my girlfriend at the time in high school, we, I fell in love, and I wanted to start a life with her, and... um I didn't have like a job or anything like that. Or I had a a small job just delivering pizzas. So I said, let me turn professional. Let's see how far I can make it. Maybe I could do enough to buy a house. I wanted to buy a wedding wedding ring to get married and all that stuff. And that's how it started. I turned professional and my career ended up taking off. Yeah, well, your dad was actually your trainer though too. So you actually had your dad there to kind of guide you. Oh, what other though? I mean, guide me to what he knew, which wasn't much. (laughs) <laughs> you know, but but he think but he thinks he's the best thing since sliced bread. <laughs> He'll talk about everybody. Everybody's a bum, but him. But uh, <laughs> you know, he was my dad, and I had to respect him, and I listened to him. Okay, all right. Question two: How was your experience on the Contender Series season one? And uh, and if you can tell me any stories from there or whatever, how that went for you? 
Well, listen, I love I love being on the contender, you know, and I love being on with the guys. Uh, we actually created such a bond being on there for so long that you know you didn't even want to fight them after a while. You know, you you wanted to be a team and you know maybe go fight other people because we were all training together, we were all living together, we were, we were doing challenges together. We, you know, then after a while, you like after weeks being there at a time, you didn't want to fight them. So it was tough towards the end to want to fight these guys. Um, but it was a great experience. Like I said, I, I, um, I still talk to a lot of the guys. I send the messages all the time. Uh, they became part of my family, you know, so it was a great experience. Um, I got to meet, you know, Sylvester Stallone. I got to meet Sugar Ray Leonard was probably one of the goats. Um, you know, and we got to talk BS a little bit and, you know, it was a great experience in my life. Something I would have never did if I didn't join the show. So I'm, I'm very happy that I did. Is there is there any story that sticks out in your mind that you really remember that you can talk about? A memorable story from there? Uh, you know, probably, I don't know, probably uh, the first time I lost, which, which was the first fight to Alfonso Gomez, um, you know, I, I really didn't want to go back, you know, because I, I was mentally not there. Uh, I couldn't make that weight. The weight class is 157. And I was walking around the show like 174. And I was losing all that weight. And the weigh-ins were in the morning, mind you, where, where you're fighting. Well, I was fighting before that for the title. So we'd weigh in the night before, then you fight the day after. So you got a chance to rehydrate and all that stuff. But we couldn't do that on the show. We had a weigh-in in the morning and fight in the evening. So um, once they called me back, I was like, <laughs> how am I going to make this weight? How am I going to go forward? How am I going to think I'm going to lose again? You know, but uh, I ended up getting back, going back, and um, I ended up beating Miguel Espino, who was like in tip-top shape, and uh, he was one of the the greats on the West Coast at the time. And um, I ended up beating him, and it built my confidence slowly but surely, and I just kept winning after that, and made it to the final. So. Yeah, and then you and Sergio Mora fought. And Sergio kicked my ass for the million. <laughs> So listen, off air, I brought something up to you. I wanted to know if you knew it. You didn't know it, so now I'm going to tell – I'm going to let you know, obviously, again, but I want the world boxing fans to know this. Personally, I think this should be a Guinness Book of Record, and hopefully you contact them or somebody contacts them or somebody sees this and contacts them because this needs to be in, this, in the Guinness Book of World Records. Out of five seasons of The Contender, you – as far as I know, you are the only boxer – that actually has 13 different opponents from those five seasons on your professional boxing record. You have fought 13 different people on the contender. That's pretty impressive, man. So That's you, I guess you, like you said off air, you're the real contender. I'm the real deal. You know, Sergio might be me in the finale for the million, but I'm the real contender. Yes. I'll take yeah, that. I, I don't think, I don't think Sergio <laughs> fought 13 of the guys on the contender. He might've fought four or five. Maybe I'm not sure, but not 13. Well, he didn't have to, you know, he did well. He did very well in his career. He won a world title. He beat Brennan Forrest. He did well, you know, so my hat's off to him too, you know? Oh yeah. Oh, but you, you got a couple big names too. though. Oh, we all did. We, I mean, we did. Yeah. You know, but I got to give credit to where credit's due too, which I did. You know, all okay. those all those guys on the contender were all good guys, all all ranked somewhere or, or all contenders, you know. So the show really had the name for the guys. They were really contenders. So we all went and, and fought each other and it was a tough thing to do, but we did it. Okay. Question three. Who is the one fighter in your career that you never got to fight that you really wanted to fight? Hmm. Oh wow. Oh. Oh. I don't know. I don't think I have one. You know, I fought, I never. To be honest with you, I only fought for for the money to 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 get to get ahead in life with my wife. Like I said, when I met her in high school, so every fight that I had, the promoters picked for me and this and that. Whoever I had a fight, I had a fight. I got I had to get ready to fight. Who did I want to fight? Oh man, I I never really, I never. You know. I, I've have a, I have a lot of idols in the game. I love Fernando Vargas. I love guys like that. Oscar De La Hoya. I love whatever. I want to fight those those guys would probably kill me. But <laughs> I I love all those guys. You know what I mean? This is the truth. This is the truth, right? A truth podcast. So I got to tell the truth. Those guys. 
those guys are great. You know what I mean? Uh, but okay. I always looked up to guys like that. I love Felix Trinidad. I love guys like that around my weight class. Um, there's so many more I can name. You know, Marvin Hagler was probably one of the goats of all time. Um, there's so many more names I could throw out there that I'm not thinking about right now. But uh, someone that I never that I wanted to fight that I never did. I I never I never had anybody like that. No. Okay. All right. Question four. What's the first thing you bought with your first big contract? Um, what did I buy? I bought, um, so a guy that was teaching me how to, um, invest in properties and stuff like that. I bought him a, a, a custom made Holly Davidson, you know? Uh, so I actually bought something that that's when I lost the contender. You know, we got, we, I got a, I got a check. It wasn't as big as the million, but I got a little bit. So I, I said, you know what? The guy taught me how to, uh, invest in properties and try to make money someday and do something besides boxing to make money. So I, I bought him a custom made Holly and that cost me 20 grand. Okay. All right. Question five. What is something that your boxing fans don't know about you? Hmm. I'm soft. <laughs> yeah, you're soft. <laughs> oh, no, nah, I, I don't know. I'm just, uh, I'm a boring guy. Maybe. You know, I, I get up I, I get up at like 3, 3.30 every morning. I go to work every day. I take my grandmother to church every Sunday. Um, I'm very, very plain. Uh, I stay home. I don't do much. Uh, I don't know. That's a okay. good question, but I don't know. All right, question six. What is the craziest or the funniest story that ever happened between you and a boxing fan? Hmm. I remember one time I was uh, I was fighting down the Civic Center, which is the the Dunkin' Donuts Center down Providence, Rhode Island, where I, I worked. Um, I was fighting down there, and uh, the guy was such a big fan. Um, he he was uh, trying to get in the back and get in my face and things like that. And I get, I got he got into a scuffle with my father, and uh, my father ended up trying to hit him or, or something like that, and they got into a big scuffle and. Uh, a fight broke out, and then they they broke it up, and um, the guy ended up calling the gym a couple of times, telling me he's gonna give me a beating when he sees me, and all this other crazy stuff. And it was, it was just, it was just nonsense and crazy. But uh, I don't even remember the guy's name, to be honest with you. <laughs> okay. Question seven: What animal best fits your personality? Hmm. What animal? I don't know. I'm a dog person, so probably dog. Okay. Question eight. What is your proudest moment out of your boxing career? Uh, winning the world title, especially because my wife was there, and it was for her, and I did it for her. So I, I remember I remember uh, giving her a big hug on the ring apron after the fight, and uh, that was probably my, my best moment right there. Okay. Uh, question nine. Did you ever suffer any injuries due to the sport of boxing? Well, again, back to what I was telling you, when I was uh, supposed to fight in Italy two years ago, I spot this big heavyweight, Sean Bay, and he, he must have hit me so hard in the head, he bruised my brain. So I'm still walking around today numb on my right side of my body. You know, I have all right, I have all tingling in my right arm and from the top of the shoulder all the way down, and I got a burning sensation in my right foot. And it's been like that for two years straight. So now it's like constant? It's 24 hours a day or does oh, it fluctuate? No, it's 24 hours a day. I can't get rid of it. You know, but they, they said, so I text, I text a doctor that did a surgery on my daughter. My daughter had a brain tumor, Mercedes. And uh, the doctor, Dr. Petra Klinger, who uh, saved her life for me, did the operation. I send her a message every morning because I love her, you know, because she saved my daughter's life. So. I said, and she said that I asked her, but I said, well, will a bruise on the brain ever heal? She said it, it will, but it just takes years. It just takes years, but it's been two years. I still feel the same, but I'm kind of used to it now. Okay. So it is what it is, right? Yeah. All right. God, question. Huh? God didn't tell me to go in the ring and get hit. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. Question 10. If you could win a trophy or an award in something other than boxing, what would it be? I just want to be the, the best guy I could be, the best person I could be. That's all. You know, I want to be the best dad, the best husband, uh, the best father. I want to be the best of everything, you know, and that's that's it. 
Okay. Question 11. If you got into a street fight with three guys, what two East Coast boxers would you choose to be on your side to fight with? That was on my season? No, no, no. Just East Coast boxers right now Oh, that, that are active right now, East Coast boxers. All right. Can, can, I, can I mention Mike Tyson? He's going to fight pretty soon, right? So yeah. Mike, like he's on my team. <laughs> so Mike Tyson's definitely on my team. And who else? Uh, I got to pick an Italian guy, so I would pick Jake LaMotta. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, question 12. If you had to spend 30 days in a jail cell, what comedian would you choose to be your cellmate? Oh, wow. What comedian? Hmm. Wow. My father. He's the biggest comedian I know. No, I'm really <laughs> <laughs> no, um, probably Jim Carrey. I love Jim Carrey. Okay, yeah, he'd keep you laughing for thirty oh my, days. Oh my God, I would love to have him in there. All right, question thirteen: Who was your favorite opponent to fight? <sighs> my favorite opponent to fight. Jesus, I got fifty fights. You're making me think now. Ugh, ugh. My favorite one. Uh, I would have to say Joe Calzaghe. Reason being, he was just so fast and so good and so skilled and such a nice guy. And he was the Italian dragon. Now, I'm Italian, so, you know, I would probably say Joe Calzaghe. He was just a classy guy, probably the best guy I ever fought skill-wise. Um, the hottest punch I ever fought though was Saki Obika, but the best talented guy I ever fought was uh Joe Kawasaki, hands down. And that was actually the next question, question 14 Who is the hardest puncher you've ever faced in the ring in a fight or sparring? Oh, Saki Obika, without a doubt, hands down. He hit me so hard in my in Providence at the Dunkin' Donuts Center, I'm still feeling it to this day. <laughs> <laughs> He was such a great guy, too. He was such a great guy, but he just said, I'm sorry I hit you, I hit you so hard and knock you off, but I had to do what I had to do. I said, listen, just don't hit me like that no more. <laughs> <laughs> All right, question 15. If you could have one superhero ability, what would it be? Oh, man. Superhero ability. I don't want to be dirty, so let me... Uh, I, I want to say I could see through things, you know. That'd X-ray be nice. vision? Yeah, that'd be awesome, you know. Okay. All right, question 16. If you could meet any infamous person from history, who would you want to meet? Uh, let me see. Hmm. Marilyn Monroe. Yeah, but she's not infamous though. She's famous, but infamous like like a John Gotti type or a criminal type. Al Capone. There you go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Question seventeen. Can you tell me an interesting story out of your boxing career at all? I've been doing it my whole life, so my whole life's interesting. Um, interesting story. I got it. I got invited a lot to uh, the Fernando Vargas camps, the Shane Mosley camps. So I've been in the ring with two of the best fighters of all time in my eyes. Um, I've had a great run. I had a great career. I've met a lot of good people. I've met a lot of great fighters. Uh, I've been to the Boxing Hall of Fame two or three times in Kansas City, New York. Um, I shared the room with a lot of great fighters. Uh, I've just lived a great life. I've had a great career. People know who Peter Manfredo Jr. is. So I accomplished what I had to do and more. Um, uh, the sport gave me everything I have today. Uh, with the notoriety, uh, I was able to create a life for my wife, for my kids. And, uh, you know, I'm just, I'm just proud of what I've done. And I'm just happy that I became a fighter. Okay. 
All right, question 18. What's your opinion of the YouTubers and the internet influencers getting involved in the sport of boxing? I don't really don't have an opinion. Whatever people want to do is it's they could do, you know, it's it is what it is. Like the Jake Paul, Mike Tyson thing, they're gonna make a lot of money. Why not? You know, I'm happy for them because life is about well, just like boxing is boxing is about making as much money as you can with as least damage you can to get out. So God bless them. So I'm I'm happy for them. I really don't have an opinion. You know, if people want to buy it and want to see it, more power to them. So, okay. All right. Question 20 Have you ever had an incident where you thought you were going to die? No. 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 <laughs> okay. But am I afraid? Of, am I afraid of death? And the, the answer is also no. You know, because I believe in God. You know, okay. so. Energy never dies. We are all energy. We got to go somewhere when we leave here. So I try to do the best I can every day and be the best person I could be. All and right. Well, look, well, listen, Peter, I appreciate you taking time to come on here and do the 20 random questions. If there's anything you want to, you know, say to the fans before we close, go ahead. I wanted to say thank you to all my fans who came, supported me, bought tickets, spent their money, their hard-earned money on me and all that stuff through the years. So thank you for all the support always. Um, and uh, just keep punching, baby. All right. Hold on. And with that, the truth has spoken.